Diablo 4 just came out. Starfield is scheduled for September. And there's even Stalker 2 scheduled for December as I live and breathe. Touch wood. If there's ever a good time to get back into PC gaming, now would be it. But building a PC is pretty expensive these days and you'll probably need to upgrade your monitor too because your monitor old. If only there's a more affordable way. So this is the LOP15, the newest budget-friendly gaming laptop from Lenovo that just came out in May 2023 and it starts out at just 3,969 ringgit or 900 US dollars. When it comes to entry-level gaming laptops to keep prices down, there are bound to be some compromises. Basically, you literally can't afford to have everything. Where a manufacturer decides to make those compromises will tell us whether or not they actually give a hoot about consumers, which are gamers in this situation. I'm gonna break this video down into three parts, the pros, the compromises, and the mess, which are like almost there but not quite and can use some improvement. Oh yeah, this laptop was sent over for this review but as usual, I'm a bangsawan so I reserve my right to say anything I want, okay? If you're interested to pick one up for yourself after watching this review, feel free to use the links in the description to hashtag support local to make more content like this. So let's kick things off with the pros. And the first one is the price to performance ratio. The Lenovo Log series is meant to be the more affordable cousin to their Legion lineup. The Log 15 is the smaller model and there's a larger 16 inch Log 16. Like I said, the base model starts out at 3,969. Ringgit, uh, but our review model is priced at 5,299 ringgit and comes with a Ryzen 7 7840HS processor with 8 cores and 16 threads, uh, an RTX 4050 graphics card, and only 8GB of medium speed DDR5 memory, as well as 512GB of PCIe Gen 4 storage. Let's just take a look at some performance benchmarks. All these benchmarks are done with the performance mode and we're gonna kick things off with gaming benchmarks. As you can see in Diablo 4, to hit more than 100 FPS, you're going to be gaming mostly in 1080p. But hey, at least we're still getting more than 80 FPS in 1440p high. The same goes for Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Horizon Zero Dawn. The next four games are slightly more demanding but we could still hit 90 plus FPS in 1080p medium uh, as well as more than 60 60 frames per second in a 1440p medium. Well, except for Resident Evil 4 Remake, 58 frames per second, close enough. Next, we did some ray tracing and DLSS tests. With the RTX 4050 for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I recommend gaming in 1080p with ray tracing on high and DLSS on quality, or go 1440p with RT on high and DLSS on performance. I was actually pleasantly surprised that we hit more than 60 FPS uh, with Cyberpunk on 1080p with ray tracing on high and DLSS on quality. But in 1440p for games that are more demanding like this, you'd be better off sticking to the ray tracing medium preset uh, with the LSS on performance. For those who play less demanding shooters like Doom Eternal or even competitive titles like Valorant, this laptop is gonna do great. Uh, we also ran 3D Mark tests for those who want to see how it compares to their current laptops. All in all, uh, pretty good for the price in terms of gaming performance. Moving on, we have productivity benchmarks for those who want to use this laptop for, well, productivity tasks as well. Pugeband shows that this laptop will be able to handle Photoshop, uh, Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve pretty well. I must note that the 4050 is going to perform quite a bit better than the 3050 in terms of 3D tasks like Blender and V-Ray because of its improved uh, CUDA and also RTX performance. Cinebench shows us that this new Ryzen 7 7840HS performs quite a bit better than its predecessor in both a single thread and multi-threaded workloads. Honestly, those numbers are pretty impressive considering the price. I would personally downgrade the CPU to the Ryzen 5, which is an option. I keep the RTX 4050 and upgrade the RAM to 16GB as well as add on more storage for your prawn collection. Uh, which is very easy to do with this laptop, leading us to the second pro, upgradability. 
So the lock 15 is pretty easy to open up. Just undo all these screws, pop up the back piece with the vent and you'll get access to two RAM slots and two M.2 slots. Only one of each of these slots are populated. So even if you don't want to add more storage, I would still recommend that you use up both RAM slots because going for a dual channel configuration with an AMD CPU is gonna yield maybe 10 to 20% more FPS, especially in a full HD, which is the resolution that you're more likely to game at. Next, we have the aesthetics and build quality. The Log 15 actually looks pretty nice. It's very sleek with understated gaming vibes and minimal branding, which is very nice. The chassis is mostly gunmetal with a black textured back piece that has tiny strips of light blue accents. Build quality is also very acceptable even though it's mostly plastic. It passes the single finger opening test with flying colors. The hinge is smooth but firm. Uh, there's very minimal screen wobble and very little flex on the keyboard. Next, let's talk about the display, which is a 165Hz refresh rate 1440p IPS panel that is pretty good for gaming. However, you'd most probably be gaming at 1080p with that RTX 4050 if you want higher frame rates. Oh yeah, that 350 nits peak brightness is also pretty acceptable for most conditions. Just don't go take this laptop out and game in the park, okay? If you're outside, just look at the grass, sniff some flowers, you know? Or sniff whatever you want. Number five, five, five. There are plenty of ports that are mostly located at the back, okay? And in fact, I'm so satisfied that I can even forgive that ancient USB 2.0 port on the right. By the way, that electronic ease shutter switch for the camera is handy, but I'd still feel safer if I could physically just cover up the camera. Number six, it has a decent type of keyboard get it. I'm liking the full size arrow keys uh, and it also has a decent amount of travel, uh, the key switches, which is pretty good. And for those who dare, I mean care, there are four zones of RGB for you to customize. It's not per key RGB, la, but okay for the price one. And did I mention the free mouse? Because only weirdos game with the trackpad. That's you, right? Anyways, the mouse is aight, but why complain? It's free. Now let's talk about the cons and I'm going to firstly address the elephant in the room which is how chunky this is. This is definitely not the most compact 15 inch laptop out there and while it might not look like it, there's actually quite a lot of wasted space. Look at them thick bezels especially at the bottom. Uh, could have actually fitted in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. Also, they could have shortened the back exhaust part as well. I speculate that they probably had to make the plastic case a little bit thicker to keep it this rigid, uh, but it is barely lighter than the Legion 5 with an all-metal chassis. Though, I must say that the 170 watt charger is relatively small, so at least there's that. It also gets quite loud. Uh, while the laptop stayed pretty quiet in silent and balanced mode, when you flip on performance mode to get all those FPS games, to get your money's worth because you're on a budget, you know, it kind of sounds like you're gaming next to a hairdryer. Not a very loud hairdryer, but still pretty noisy lah. Now let's move on to the myths, which are things that could be improved but not really deal breakers. The first one is the screen color accuracy. Uh, this panel is rated for 100% sRGB, but here are our actual test results. Uh, it's not going to be the most color accurate if you want to do things like color grading and stuff like that, but with that processor and also the GPU, you can probably get away with a simple video editing for YouTube content creation for like TikTok and stuff like that. The speakers are also pretty subpar. They are not the loudest with barely any bass. I do not enjoy listening to music or gaming with them, but still plenty acceptable for watching videos, though it's not going to be very immersive without all that. What's it? What's it? No, it's not. It should be more like... Is that? It's all about the bass. No bass, okay? It has no bass. Oh, yeah. 
Now I'm not calling this laptop hot and for the most part it ran pretty cool but the middle of the keyboard closer to the space bar does have a hot spot that can get a little toasty. I would definitely recommend flipping on performance mode when you're running heavier multi-threaded CPU workloads. Finally, the battery life is not the greatest. With a gaming laptop, you'll probably be plugging it in most of the time to get max performance but I do find myself wanting a little more juice out of the 60 watt hour battery in this laptop. The webcam is also just aight. It's pretty clear but the auto brightness tends to overexpose the image quite a bit. This is how the camera looks and sounds like. Finally, I have a very important question for you, Lenovo. So your brand color is red, right? The Lock series marketing material is mostly purple and pink, right? So why? Why so blue? So much young lan. What a sing, lan lan di. To recap, here are the pros, mares, and cons of the Lenovo Log 15 AMD Edition. I give this Lenovo Log 15 a pretty solid for gaming hashtag cheap buy. 8 out of 10. No matter how hard you wish with that budget of yours, and trust me, I understand how hard earned it must be if you're just starting out, there are definitely some compromises. In my humble opinion though, the compromises that come with the Lenovo Log 15 are pretty easy to tolerate considering the gaming performance and even screen that is giving you for the price. Heck, with a Ryzen 7 in this thing and a decently laid out thermal design, it's even going to be be pretty good for productivity tasks like video editing. Of course, uh, the screen won't be the most color accurate and the keyboard might get a little warm towards the center when you are rendering of the CPU at 100%, uh, but at least it can get the job done. So, if you're shopping for an entry-level gaming laptop in 2023, I highly recommend giving the Lenovo Log 15 a go. Uh, feel free to check out the links in the description if you want to pick this up with the latest deals and also to support us to make more content like this. And that is everything I have to say about this laptop. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a like and share. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to not miss out more content like this. Also, if you are a stalker, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, my name is Bang Sawan Shane, and I will see you in the next one.